Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I am Bill Miller. The main purpose of this show is to promote a discussion of major international issues, such as war and peace, economic development, climate change, and human rights that impact people worldwide. Hopefully, Global Connections Television will inspire, involve, and motivate all of us to deal with these issues and help to create a better world. Today's program will focus on the United Nations work in the coordination of the humanitarian response to worldwide emergencies and the fundraising work of the UN Central Emergency Response Fund. We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're going to focus the spotlight on a major humanitarian outreach program of the United Nations. And my guest today is certainly an expert on this program and humanitarian relief. My guest today is Ms. Lisa Doughton. Ms. Lisa Doughton joined the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in 2013 as Chief of the United Nations Central Emergency Response Fund Secretariat, commonly called SURF. Ms. Lisa Doughton, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you, Bill, for having me. I appreciate you being with me today. We'll probably be using SURF a lot as yes, we go along. We will. <laughs> Let's start off at the top. You're part of OCHA, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Just very briefly, what is OSHA, OCHA? What, what is its mission? Yeah, as you mentioned, OCHA is the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. It is responsible for helping coordinate humanitarian operations worldwide and working with partners, both UN agencies and non governmental organizations host governments as well to coordinate humanitarian operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go now, right ahead. I was just going to mention, so within that, is, as you said, the SURF, the Central Emergency Response Fund, the secretariat that I manage, uh, is part of OCHA, is managed by OCHA, and the head of OCHA is, the, is Stephen O'Brien, who is the Under Secretary mm -hmm. General. As well, he is the Emergency Relief Coordinator, so as such, he works with the humanitarian system broad, more broadly and he also manages the Central Emergency Response Fund, or the SURF. Exactly, and of course, OCHA is a key player. As I'm sure SURF's involved in this also, as we'll talk about in a moment, but if there's a typhoon in the Philippines or an earthquake in Haiti or wherever it might be, OCHA mm -hmm. is on the ground, one of the first UN agencies. If it wasn't there before the problem, it's certainly there after, immediately thereafter. So you really are right in the thick of it. It's in the midst of many of these disasters. Mm, that's right. OCHA does operate, has, has presence in about 20 different countries, full-time presence in 20 different countries. As well, when there is a, a situation that evolves, or whether there's a rapid onset uh, emergency, then OCHA also deploys staff to those particular countries to work with operational partners such as UNICEF, the World Food Program, and, and non-governmental organizations or NGOs. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about SURF, the mm -hmm. Central Emergency Response Fund. What is SURF? When was it formed? Why was it formed? Okay. Uh, the SURF is the UN's Global Emergency Response Fund. So it is one of the largest and fastest and most effective ways to provide funding to humanitarian operations worldwide whenever a crisis happens and whenever it happens. So SURF pulls donors' funds together to ensure that the money is there and ready whenever something happens. So it's really, you know, when an emergency happens, when a crisis hits, then time lost is lives lost. So to have the funding available and ready to fund these partners on the ground immediately is really essential to ensuring that people, uh, s people's lives are saved and their uh, suffering is reduced. Exactly. Now, do you receive most of your funding from governments or can the public sector or the private sector donate? Could uh, mm -hmm. businesses donate, individuals? Mm -hmm. How, where do you receive the majority of your funds? Primarily, our money is received from member states uh, as well as regional organizations. We do provide, we do receive some uh, private sector uh, contributions. Uh, we also receive contributions from individuals. However, we would also encourage much more of that. Uh, the private sector is a, a less than 1% of the contributions we receive. Uh, we have broad support from member states. 125 countries have uh, contributed to the SURF since its inception in 2005. 
since its recreation under the humanitarian reforms. So we really do enjoy broad support as well. Even countries that receive funding such as Mali, Pakistan and Turkey also are contributors to the surf. So it's really a fund for all and by all. So they could be a contributor and a recipient. It Correct. just depends upon what the status is and mm -hmm. what the situation requires. So That's right. Very good. Well, you have three objectives on your website. Mm -hmm. And the first one is to promote early action and response to reduce loss of life. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that and maybe bring in some examples of some of the sure. countries where you're working. I know you're working in many countries, but uh, talk about that and some specific examples mm -hmm. of what you're doing on the ground to achieve that objective. Okay. Uh, I think one of the best examples of that right now would be uh, the El Nino climatic event that is uh, happening now. I think people see that in the news now. Uh, El Nino is causing drought and food insecurity worldwide. So SURF has already provided almost $60 million in, in the last six to nine months to address some of these, uh, these situations. So where you have food insecurity and you have people that are hungry, uh, and they need to protect their livelihoods, then SURF provides funding to partners on the ground, such as World Food Program, to provide food aid assistance or to food and agriculture organization to uh, help out on the agricultural sector, water mm -hmm. sanitation as well through partners such as UNICEF and their implementing partners. So I think um, it's certainly worldwide and El Nino has been hitting worldwide. So some of the countries that have received this funding have been El Salvador, uh, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia most recently. Uh, so really it's a worldwide uh, event that is mm -hmm. a rapid response uh, and early action funding. Exactly. This uh, provision of food is very important and it's, mm. it t it t there are so many challenges involved mm. in this. What are some of the major challenges you run into if you go into a country, say, that needs food assistance? I, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's El Salvador or whichever, but uh, how do you, what are some of the major problems you confront right as you go into an area to provide assistance? Mm -hmm. Well, first I would explain that SURF doesn't actually go to these places. We provide the funding to the partners that are operating on the ground. So th those that I mentioned, uh, UNICEF, World Food Program, mm -hmm. uh, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, the UN Refugee Agency, and such. Uh, so they are already operating on the ground. The activities that we fund are those that are prioritized by people there on the ground. So in a situation where an earthquake hits, for instance, uh, last year in Nepal, in April of last year, um, then there were partners on the ground already, and then the SURF was able to provide a, a large amount of money, uh, $20, 25000000 million to Nepal, uh, to the country team that was operating there, the UN country team. And that was done within 48 hours to allow them to provide food assistance to people there. So access issues are certainly very important uh, in making sure that the people get the assistance that they need. Exactly. So logistics, SURF also funds logistics operations. Uh, one example of that that uh, I think would be uh, that, that the public would be aware of is the Ebola crisis in 2014. And SURF was very early in that uh, crisis in March of 2014 by providing assistance to the UN Humanitarian Air Service. Uh, and when the commercial airlines were dropping their flights because of fear of spreading Ebola, uh, the UN Humanitarian Air Service allowed for uh, the partners to continue to fly to the different countries to provide assistance and SURF pr and provided that support. Exactly. And of course, our viewers can go to your website at surf.un.org and get much more information about what we're talking about and probably learn how they can make contributions if they would like to do that. And I'm assuming you're a 501c3, which means it would be tax deductible in certain countries, depending on where th those laws are applicable. But mm -hmm. that uh, we would encourage folks to go to the, to Most the website. Most definitely, yes. And the, the US, cit U.S. citizens can provide funding directly. It goes through the UN Foundation, but it is a, a tax deductible contribution through UN Foundation that then comes to the SURF as well for citizens of the United Kingdom there's also a tax uh, uh, benefit as well through another channel so but I would definitely encourage people to go there because uh, the more funding that is provided is the more uh, vulnerable people that can be mm -hmm. assisted uh, very quickly when something happens for sure exactly and it's so critical to move very rapidly when you mm -hmm. have a disaster like that you can't sit around for five weeks and say, well, we'll deliberate and lay out right. an extensive plan. How do you, what is your planning, or what is your strategy, I guess, when mm. something like this happens? Do you have a, a, an immediate response team, or what do you do as far mm -hmm. as kicking into gear and to move very, very quickly to provide the funding that's needed? Mm -hmm. Well, we do rely upon our partners on the ground. So, for instance, when Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines in November 2013, 
Uh, the OCHA helped pre-deploy some people. There were already agencies, the operational agencies that were there on the ground um, and identifying possible uh, areas of, of support. We know when a typhoon hits that there's need for shelter, there's need for food, uh, water sanitation, et cetera. So as soon as that hit, uh, we worked with the country team there, the UN country team, the partners, and identified what were the most crucial sectors to kickstart those activities. So. SURF provided $25 million uh, within 48 hours to mm -hmm. the partners uh, in the Philippines to kickstart operations. And that's really the key for SURF because it's, uh, it provides really time critical inputs to, uh, to these operations to allow them to start operations. I'm glad you mentioned time critical. That's objective number two, uh, exactly. enhanced response to time critical requirements. Mm -hmm. And of course you've been talking about that. Mm -hmm. And that is just absolutely pivotal to, mm -hmm. to move as fast as possible. Have you seen over the years that, I, I guess every disaster or every humanitarian request is the same, but everyone's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are no two that are exactly alike. Are there any best practices that have come out of some of these up to this point that, mm -hmm. that you say, well, this is what happened three years ago or five years ago, and uh, this is what, if it happens again, this is what we need to do or mm -hmm. not to do, mm -hmm. whichever the case might be. We certainly learn from every, every situation. Um, we do rely upon the strategic prioritization at the country level, so people at the field level do know best what's needed. Um, and we also encourage them to work very carefully and closely together because the SURF supports coordination at the field level as well as a strengthened leadership at the country level of the humanitarian coordinator that is really ensuring that uh, the outcomes are the best possible for the vulnerable, vulnerable people there on the ground. So we, we constantly learn from each uh, situation where we are providing that funding and we, we work very closely with the partners on that. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We would invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you have any type of media outreach, if you're involved with a public broadcasting system or community access television, a university intra-campus television hookup, a website, whatever it might be, and you have an interest in these international issues and would like to share them with your viewers, you're invited to go to our website also and download any of our programs. They're provided free of charge at no cost to everyone as a public service. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting operation within the United Nations to help provide funding for humanitarian assistance, and this is called the SURF program. My guest is an expert on SURF. My guest today is Ms. Lisa Doughton. Ms. Lisa Doughton is the chief of the United Nations Central Emergency Response Fund, SURF, Secretariat. We're talking about the time, uh, the immediate response and how mm. we can move more quickly. And we're talking about also the lessons that have been learned in, in these particular situations mm -hmm. and, and these disasters. Do you have, it's, it's hard to predict uh, what's going to happen. Uh, earthquakes, mm -hmm. even though they're probably getting closer to predicting earthquakes, but uh, do you have folks who are thinking about the next set of tragedies that may be mm. coming up? I know that uh, you have other people, the World Food Programs on the ground, you have UNICEF, the UN Children's Fund on mm -hmm. the ground, but uh, do you have folks who are thinking down the road like climate change is getting worse in certain areas, mm -hmm. we may have problems here. Uh, I guess, is there an early warning system that I'm, is what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, maybe an interagency early warning system? Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting question because uh, one of the things that SURF does do, in addition to providing grants to rapid response or rapidly deteriorating situations or sudden onset such as an earthquake or typhoon, uh, also in, in conflict where protracted situations exist. So thinking about South Sudan, Central African Republic, uh, you know, Chad, uh, in those situations where the needs are very high, vulnerability is high, but funding is low, then we also have what's called the underfunded emergencies window. And within that, we do work with a group of, uh, of UN agency representatives, and we look at the different indices. So we look at early warning indices to see what's coming down the pike. Are there, you know, are there indicators that show that there's a growing food insecurity in certain places? Uh, we look at uh, projected income or contributions to those areas. So there is some planning done, especially for the underfunded emergencies window, because that's done twice a year. 
uh, and really looking at those operations that are severely underfunded. They don't necessarily hit the media, or they might have been in the media, such as Somalia, and then fall from the media's attention because of other things, such as Syria. So, and we funded, uh, SURF has funded operations in both of those, in both of those places. Exactly. And uh, when, when you said that, when you were talking about underfunded areas mm. and talking about these crisis areas, uh, the first one that came to mind is Syria because of the mm -hmm. tragedy that's unfolding in that particular country. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look across the region, of course, even Iraq, which is semi-stable, but it's becoming more and more debilitated mm. every day. It's, it's, uh, I hate to say it, it's moving towards a failed state situation. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you involved in Iraq? Are you looking at providing assistance mm -hmm. in Iraq? Mm -hmm. Well, since 2011, the SURF has provided over $200 million to Syria and the countries surrounding, including Iraq, Lebanon, uh, Jordan, those countries that are really affected by the refugee flows from Syria. And when we do hear that top of the agenda these days, uh, and it is important to ensure that the people in those countries, both refugees that are, are landing in those countries, but also host communities because their resources are overstretched. So SURF provides the funding through partners uh, to support uh, both the host communities as well as the refugees that are fleeing uh, situations such, such as Syria. Mm, exactly, yes, it's very important. Now, do you have uh, any basic statistics? I'm sure you keep track of this mm. or try to identify how, how many folks you've helped or whatever mm -hmm. the case might be. When it comes to like uh, working with the World Food Program, providing food assistance mm -hmm. or providing health and sanitation assistance, do you have any uh, ballpark figures mm -hmm. that uh, of folks that you've reached or helped to uh, help raise their quality or mm -hmm. improve their quality of life and their standard of living? Right. Well, every year, SURF allocates about $450 million to countries worldwide. Uh, with that, uh, each year, on average, the SURF enables partners to provide food assistance to over 10 million people, um, basic health services to over 20 million people each year, uh, water sanitation support to 8 million people and shelter to 1 million people. So it is quite a, a large number of people that benefit from this through, through the partners that receive uh, SURF funding. Also to mention that there are other inputs uh, such as food and agriculture inputs, logistics, camp management mm -hmm. where where either internally displaced people or refugees are being housed then camp management as well. So a whole host of sectors, but those are some of the numbers that I think are very large numbers. So there's a very high return on investment uh, mm -hmm. with when a contribution is received by the SURF. Exactly. Before we run out of time, I want to ask you about the World Humanitarian Summit, the upcoming mm -hmm. World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, Turkey. Mm -hmm. That's a major summit. Tell, first off, tell us a little bit about what the World Humanitarian Summit is mm -hmm. and how will SURF be involved? Mm -hmm. Well, the World, World Humanitarian Summit is an opportunity for the world to come together to really look at how can humanitarian operations be more centered around the people. So it really needs to involve the voice of the people that are being affected by these emergencies. It's a very inclusive uh, process involving uh, really consultations have taken place worldwide uh, and it is in support of a better humanitarian system but really with the center uh, being the people. Um, the Secretary General as part of a commitment that uh, will be announced at the World Humanitarian Summit is looking to double the amount of SURF. So right now uh, since 2005 when the SURF was uh, created by the UN General Assembly with an official target of $450 million, uh, needs have increased exponentially. So now in 2016, we're looking at maybe 125 million people in need of humanitarian assistance. That's a huge amount, and it's six-fold increase from 2005 when SURF was created, yet SURF has still say, stayed at a $450 million target. So the Secretary General will call as part of his uh, agenda for humanity for the World Humanitarian Summit for doubling the target, mm -hmm. actually a little over doubling to a billion dollars uh, for the SURF. And that will be sorely needed, I'm sure, especially with all the problems we have in the world today. Correct. Yes, but th this is so critical to have these agencies that could come together mm. at really, uh, at, on a mo not on a moment's notice, but on ver at a very quick turnaround time mm -hmm. and help to provide the assistance because people people's lives are in danger, people are in peril. Uh, you can't save everyone, obviously, but you can certainly try to work to, to help people. Now, not too long ago, in September of this past year, mm -hmm. the uh, Sustainable Development Goals came online, 17 mm -hmm. logical, practical, measurable goals adopted by the member states of the United Nations 
General Assembly, all mm -hmm. 193 countries, to eliminate all forms of poverty, to eliminate hunger, to empower women. How important were these sustainable development goals as far as tying into what you're doing mm -hmm. and what you're doing to tie into helping to achieve these the 17 sustainable development goals? Mm -hmm. Well, SURF is very much, uh, the, the programs that SURF supports are very much part of the, the sustainable development goals. Uh, the overarching objective, as set out by the Secretary General, is to leave no one behind. And of course, because SURF really looks at the most vulnerable populations worldwide, then this is part of the Secretary General's push. Um, and the SURF does very much contribute to that overarching goal of leaving no one behind. It certainly does, yes, mm. and that, that is absolutely critical, absolutely critical. Do you, uh, do you folks get together, I know you coordinate with like the World Food Program, mm -hmm. UN Children's Fund, but do you get together periodically with them on a regular basis to, to talk about strategy, to look at uh, mm. like some of these upcoming problems, mm -hmm. and to talk about what you're doing, and to measure the effectiveness mm -hmm. of what you're doing as far as the outreach to help people? Mm -hmm. Well, we, the Surf Secretary, do have annual consultations with, the, with our partners, uh, but I think more broadly, when you're talking about the programmatic uh, uh, consultations, that happens all the time with the people in the field. So where OCHA is there in the field, constantly working with the partners, uh, even in, in the countries where SURF provides assistance, uh, pr uh, provides the funding to the humanitarian partners, maybe OCHA might not be there because SURF provides funding to over 50 countries or approximately 50 countries every year uh, and almost 100 countries worldwide since inception. So uh, OCHA is a small but uh, very effective organization, is not present in all the different countries, but SURF is available to any country worldwide that, that needs that, where the vulnerabilities are high mm -hmm. and there's a need for rapid response and, and life-saving and time-critical inputs. Mm -hmm. And of course, our viewers can go to CERF dot un dot org and get much more information about your programs and also she mentioned you to make contributions if they would mm -hmm. like to do so let's talk a little bit about the the situation with not uh, so much the uh, the well i won't say mature people <laughs> like myself but let's just say younger people mm -hmm. and talk about they are so critical in the future to mm -hmm. uh, many of them are involved today i know the secretary general the sustainable development goals are involving mm -hmm. literally hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of young people around the world, maybe millions perhaps, uh, I'm not sure of the count, to get involved and to do things, mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, supportive of programs, to eliminate poverty, mm -hmm. to uh, f combat climate change, to things like that. Uh, first off, how important is it to get young people involved mm. into learning more about what you're doing and also to be hands-on and to try to get involved in helping to deal with these problems, if not today, certainly mm -hmm. tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I think it's essential, and uh, the World Humanitarian Summit is an opportunity where youth are involved. Uh, also, every year on August 17th, there is the World Humanitarian Day. Uh, which commemorates the bombing in Iraq uh, from 2003 uh, of a UN building where um, many were, were killed and injured. But uh, in that commemoration also, it's a rallying for support of humanity. And really the humanitarian uh, agenda is something that's important toward that. So I think youth are very much uh, uh, interested in how they can support these types of uh, world events. Um, and so again this year, I'm sure on August 19th, there'll be another call and, and hopefully youth will be able to text support to, to different uh, avenues or at least become a more aware of humanitarian mm -hmm. and humanity across the world. Exactly. Now I know funding is critical to mm. you, obviously. You have to have money to run your program mm. to, make, uh, to provide financial assistance. But as you look over the horizon, what are one or two of the major challenges you see right now over and above funding? Is there mm -hmm. something, are there some other items that are out there that we'd really we need to focus upon? I know funding mm -hmm. is critical, but mm -hmm. are there a couple of other things? Mm -hmm. Well, I think outside of SURF, but certainly mm -hmm. affecting SURF are political processes because uh, in protracted crises where SURF is spending a lot of the funding, um, the political processes need to support peace and stability in these countries so that the requirements and, and are less. 
uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, then there are 125 million people in need of humanitarian assistance now. That continues to grow. Uh, we look at the situation in Syria, which has been going on for more than five, or almost five, or f approximately five years now. It's a long time. Uh, so many people are displaced, so many people are suffering. So I think political processes are certainly uh, need to be supportive to uh, restore peace and stability as well preparedness and resilience for the people. So that can be done now, and that's also part of what the World Humanitarian Summit will be looking at. How do you increase the resilience of, of people worldwide so that when a disaster hits, uh, some kind of natural disaster hits, then people are more resilient and can rebound more quickly, and international assistan assistance is not needed. But at the same time, uh, surf uh, and a strong surf will always be needed because there will be a situation somewhere where uh, a quick injection of, of flexible funding is needed to jumpstart activities no matter what. So I think, yes, the challenge is to maintain a very strong and well resourced surf, but at the same time within all of these uh, global processes. Exactly, and that's one of the great values of the United Nations. They can bring the players of the world together. Mm -hmm. They can bring the public sector, the private sector, bring non-governmental organizations, faith-based groups, mm -hmm. service clubs such as Rotary International, Kiwanis, Lions, whatever it might be, to focus attention on these problems. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly what we need to do. But Lisa Doughton with the United Nations SURF program, I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.